If you update to Android 14, you'll be unable to install some older apps. More specifically, apps that were made for versions way before Android 6.0 Marshmallow. But don't freak out, because there are two ways around this. The first is to sideload it using ADB. Or a much easier option is to use this app called Install with Options. It's super easy to use. You just tap on Choose Files, find and pick the APK you want to install, enable this option titled Bypass Low Target SDK Block, and hit Install. Boom, you should now have that ancient app installed on your phone. Plus you can do other cool things with Install with Options, like have it automatically allow restricted permissions, so that you don't have to keep putting in your fingerprint within the app's info page. You can also have it automatically grant all of the app's permissions, be able to upgrade or downgrade an existing app without uninstalling it first. It can handle split APKs and even install multiple APKs at once. Pretty cool, right? And the best part is that it's open source, totally free and doesn't require root. Just one small thing is that you will need to activate it with the Shizuku app, but no worries, I'll walk you through how to do that at the end of the video. Check this out. I can access all of my cloud storage from various platforms on this one app called RoundSync. In other words, I can manage all the files on my Google Drive accounts, uh, Dropbox, or even Google Photos as if they were all just local folders on my phone. Plus, it supports plenty of other cloud storages as well. It's completely safe to use because it still keeps your files private by using Crypt Remotes to access your online data. It's basically like our clone for Android. Here's another cool one. Within my quick settings panel, I can open any of my favorite apps without needing to go to my launcher. If I'm playing a game and I get interrupted by a notification, I can actually disable the heads up banner from within my quick settings panel. I can open the stock file manager app, which I couldn't do otherwise. I can force rotate my screen in any direction, including 180 degrees where the phone is upside down. I can quickly open the developer options page, and I can do much more with this app called Quick Tiles. The possibilities are endless with this app, but for whatever reason, it's not on the Play Store. As a matter of fact, none of the 25 apps in this entire video are on the Play Store, but they're still really useful and completely free. So drop a thumbs up if you'd like for me to make videos that are similar to this type of content, and I'll be sure to do so if you guys are really interested. Android 12 introduced Material Youth Theming, where the colors of your OS match your wallpaper. And this app called Color Blender lets you modify that color palette even further. Once you enable it with the Shizuku app, you will be able to choose different styles. You can also select any custom color for the OS to match, and if you're rooted, you can take things even further. Like you can force specific apps that don't support monotheming to match the colors of your wallpaper. It doesn't always work, but it's still a really cool option. You can also change the lightness and saturation of the background and accent color to get a much stronger theme. And you can even make the background pitch black instead of just dark gray when you enable the dark theme. Now, I know some of you are probably already using this similar app called Repainter, but what sucks about this app is that it blocks most of its theming features behind a paywall. So that's why I recommend you turn to Color Blender because it's completely free and does the same thing. Recently, I came across MT Manager, which unlike other file managers, this one lets you access your phone's root directory without even needing root. So you can literally see and modify your system files and app data on any non-rooted device. And all you need to do is enable it with the Shizuku app. On top of that, I love how it has a dual window mode to make it really easy to transfer files between different folders. And I love how straightforward it is to use. Not to mention that it's also completely free. Most phones let you record a time lapse within the camera app. But if your phone doesn't, you can use time lapse cam. In fact, I wouldn't even go as far as to say that it works better than some OEM versions because unlike your regular camera app, time-lapse cam continues to record even if you have the screen turned off. That way your battery lasts longer and the recording does too. Plus there is no recording limit and it's way more customizable than any regular camera app, letting you record with any camera lens on your phone, choose any capture intervals, and you can even schedule when the recordings should begin and when they should stop. Pretty incredible. If you bought a phone and it has a bunch of bloatware, you can use Kanta to remove it all. Again, it requires the Shizuku app, but it's still straightforward. 
Within it, you just select the apps that you'd like to remove, and then you tap on the trash can icon down below to uninstall them. It's that easy. Plus, if you'd like to bring them back, you just go to the tab on the right, and you can get them back just as quickly. Now keep in mind that it literally lets you remove any app on your phone, including system ones that are essential for your device to run. So only remove the apps that you know are unimportant. Otherwise, if you remove the wrong app, you could get stuck in a boot loop and then you'll need to factory reset your device to get it to work again. So just be very careful. The Google Pixels have a beautiful voice recording app that only works on their devices. However, a loophole exists to get it to work on your non-Pixel device. You see, if you download this older 1.0.27 version off APK Mirror, there's a huge possibility that it could work on your non-Pixel phone. It worked on most of mine and even transcribed everything really well. But that's not to say that it'll work on every device out there. It also won't have some of the latest features that the current 4.2 version has, including a newer looking design. It won't even recognize the different speakers in the audio or use Google's AI to summarize your recordings. There's also a few more extra goodies missing, but it still has the essentials and it still works. And since I'm already talking about the Pixels, you can download and use all of the official stock Google Pixel wallpapers with this app called Pixel Walls. It carries over 200 backgrounds, ranging from the latest Pixel 8 devices to some of the older Pixel phones, like the Pixel 4a or Pixel 5. It even carries wallpapers from some past events and cultural celebrations, all to download for free. Now, if you already own a Pixel and end up rooting it, you should use this app called Pixel Expert to modify and improve the OS. I did it, and I was able to bring a light mono theme to my quick settings panel to give it some life instead of having it always be dark. Plus, I did the same thing for my power menu. I also added more vertical rows within the quick settings panel to quickly get to more tiles at once without needing to scroll to the next page. I even added a brightness level to the flashlight tile to let me adjust the brightness, and I did the same thing for this new volume tile. From there, I moved the brightness slider to the bottom of the screen to make it easier to reach with one hand. And I made a few other minor adjustments throughout the OS, like adding a more accessible clear all button to the recents page. For the icons on the Pixel Launcher's home screen, I themed every single one, including those that aren't supported, and I did a lot more. It's an absolute goldmine for any Pixel users out there, so I definitely recommend it. What's also an absolute goldmine is your online data. I'm not sure if you're fully aware, but online attacks are literally happening every single day even on smartphones. And if you're not using a VPN, then you're basically asking for it. So I use Surfshark, the sponsor of this video, cause it's the cheapest option out there. For less than three bucks a month, you can fully protect all your devices and you can share one account with all your friends and family members so that they can also stay secure. Plus besides keeping you safe, Surfshark has a few other tricks up its sleeves. Like let's say you're signing up for a website and they ask for your email address and a few other personal information. Instead of giving them your real account, Surfshark has an alternate email that you can use, which will still forward everything to your actual inbox. That way, if you start getting spammed with too many promotional emails, you can simply delete that fake account. Plus, it can give you an entirely different persona to use altogether. It's a really clever solution. Moreover, Surfshark also lets you access geo-restricted videos or websites, including content on YouTube or Netflix. And when shopping online, you won't fall victim to location-based price differences. So there are plenty of reasons to download Surfshark. And if you use my top link in the description and enter the promo code HTM, you'll even get an extra three months for free on top of a plan that costs less than a cup of coffee. It's an absolute steal. I already reviewed this next app on my last video, but it also fits perfectly within this one because it's not on the Play Store and does something really cool. It's called Vectris VM, and it lets you install almost any popular computer operating system on your Android. So you can literally install Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and a couple of other OSs on your smartphone. It's not perfect by any means, but it is kind of a flex to show your iPhone buddies. If you'd like to learn how to set it up, I'll leave my video tutorial in the cards. Routine Tracker is next, and as the name suggests, it helps you keep tabs on your daily and weekly activities. But it goes beyond just tracking. It combines a planet calendar with a habit tracker, making it easier to stay on top of everything. One cool thing it does is show you how long you've been sticking to certain tasks. For example, I can easily check my current streak for uploading on TikTok consistently, as well as my longest streak for that. 
But what really sets it apart is its adaptive scheduling. If I miss a routine, it'll suggest catching up on the next non-due date. And if I finish a habit early, it'll skip the next scheduled occurrence. It's super handy for staying organized. One of the biggest security risks that I've noticed on Android is that whenever you copy something to the clipboard, the Android OS will hold on to it for around an hour before deleting it or until you copy something else. Now, that may not be a huge deal, but when you copy sensitive data like a password, credit card info, address, or anything similar, then you might get a bit paranoid because any app on your phone will be able to read what you just copied. So that's why I started to use Memory Guardian. Not only does it let me instantly clear the clipboard, but it also lets me choose the exact time intervals at which the clipboard gets automatically cleared. So instead of clearing the clipboard every hour, I can force it to clear every 15 minutes, or even less than that. Plus it even supports a quick settings tile to let me instantly clear the clipboard that way without needing to open the app. I'm not gonna lie, I've always been a huge fan of Nothing's OS design. It's unique, creative, and eye-catching. Plus, just like every other OS, they also have some exclusive apps that I wish I could use on other phones. For example, they have an exclusive voice recorder app, a weather app, and even a stock launcher that only works on their phones. But there are some ways to get it working on your device. Starting with the recorder, you can get it working on your Android by just downloading the latest available version off APK Mirror. It worked just fine on all of the phones that I tried it on, including recording my voice without a problem. I can still pause the recording, scrub through it, slow it down or speed it up, and save it without an issue. The only things I don't think are properly working are the recording modes like voice focus and environment. Using those modes sounds exactly the same as the normal mode. For Nothing's weather app, you need to go back further and download and install this older 1.1.2 version. That's the only one that works across any Android. But even though this older version was released in April of last year, it surprisingly still looks and works extremely similarly to the latest version. The only thing is that depending on your screen size, some shapes could be unusually larger than what they look like on the Nothing phone. However, you can easily fix this by changing your pixel density within the developer options to 411. And finally, for the Nothing launcher, you can also get this working on your Android if you download this ancient 1.0.2 version. It's basically one of the first releases of the Nothing launcher back in 2022. And unlike the previous apps, this version is pretty bare bones. It has some of the first few widgets that are not even available anymore on the latest Nothing phones. I can still enlarge the icons and folders, plus within its settings I can change the grid size, icon pack for some of the icons, and get access to some of the first Nothing Launcher wallpapers and ringtones through a Dropbox link. Not bad. Even though the weather app by Nothing looks beautiful, it's still lacking some of the basic features that most other weather apps carry. So a better alternative that is a lot more feature packed and still manages to look great is this one called Breezy Weather. Unlike the Nothing Weather app, this one provides the daily and hourly forecast in a graph-like view to make it easier to see how the weather changes. Plus, when you tap on any data, a menu will pop up to give you more information about that event. But by far my favorite part about Breezy Weather is just how customizable it is. You can change the order of all the menus, choose a different icon pack, change the weather source for a more accurate forecast, and more. Now this next app does something that I haven't seen any other app do. It's called Audio Share, and it basically lets you connect your computer's audio to your smartphone. That way, your phone can be used as a speaker for your laptop or desktop. For most of you, this may be pretty pointless, but if your computer's speakers are broken and you don't have enough money to replace them, especially if it's a laptop, then you could use this as a temporary solution. Plus, getting it to work isn't too difficult. You just need to download the audio share software on your computer and make sure that both your desktop and phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. From there, you'll need to change the host and port numbers on the Android app to match the numbers on the PC software. Once you click Start Server on the computer and then Start on your phone, the audio should pair up. Really not flagship bright because we have some crazy numbers these days, but 1300 nits peak brightness is very visible and bright indoor. Speaking of audio, if you have music downloaded on your phone and are looking for a fantastic offline music player, I highly recommend you check out Gramophone. 
It follows Google's Material Design 3 perfectly, from the icons, to the animations, to the monet theming, to even to the little squiggly seek bar. It looks fantastic and modern. Plus, it has some other useful features like lyric support, a sleeping timer, an equalizer, and more. It may not be the most feature-packed option out there, but it works for me. Next, we have Covestitso, which is one of the most underrated launchers I've come across. It doesn't follow the typical AOSP launcher recipe. Instead, it's made its own rules. For example, it focuses most of its attention on the search so that you can get to your apps and data a lot quicker. You simply swipe down on the home screen and you can instantly start searching. If you'd like to access your widgets, you can swipe up on the home screen and an entire widgets page will appear. I even love that it has widgets of its own that follows a similar theme. That's just the tip of the iceberg though. This launcher carries a lot more hidden tricks and it's not a bad option if you're looking for a way to keep everything organized. Here's another launcher that isn't on the Play Store and is pretty unique. It's called Grid Launcher, and it brings back the layout you might remember from the old Windows phones, with apps arranged in different tile sizes that flip randomly. Plus, if you swipe right, you can access all your apps in a list format along with a search option. It's pretty basic, but definitely worth trying out for that nostalgic feel. There's this cool mod called IG Experiments for Instagram that unlocks a secret menu, the Developer Options menu. It's pretty easy to get to. Once you've enabled the mod, you just long press the home button and boom, there's your new menu packed with a ton of tools that the Instagram developers use to tweak their app. Just keep in mind that to get it to work, you need to install this older version of IG Experiments, version 279, and you'll also need to use this older Instagram update with that same version number, 279. It also only works if you have the LS Post app since it is an exposed mod, but if you're not rooted, you can instead use this app called Ellis Patch to get it to work. And that's literally the next app on this list. With Ellis Patch, you can get some Ellis Bows or Exposed mods working on your non rooted phone, just as long as it doesn't require root access. For example, I've used Ellis Patch to get Snap Enhanced to work on my non rooted phone. It's an Ellis Bows mod that basically unlocks several extra features for Snapchat. There's also another one called Tweefucker, which as you can probably guess from the title, is a mod for Twitter, and there are a few other modules that I got working on my non-rooted phone, all thanks to Ellis Patch. I even made an entire video going over all the Ellis Bose mods that you can get working on your non-rooted device, and in that video, I even show off how to use Ellis Patch. So I'll be sure to link that video in the cards if you're interested to watch that afterward. Now, unfortunately, this next app does require root, and there's no way around it, but I had to show it off because it is one of my all-time favorite root apps. It's called GMS Flags, and it lets me enable unreleased features within some of my Google apps. It even lets me unblock certain geo-blocked features. For example, within the Google Phone app, I enabled call recording because for whatever reason, it's blocked here in the States. For the Google Photos app, you can change the Library tab to this new Collections tab, which has an incredible redesign layout. I also enabled this feature that lets me automatically group similar photos together to clean up the gallery. In Gmail, I brought the unsubscribe button and added a new reply bar at the bottom of any email. And the list goes on and on. If you're wondering how it works, GMS Flags just changes a few parameters within those Google Apps, and that's how these hidden features appear. On the homepage of GMS Flags, you can even find some excellent suggestions. Check this out. On my home screen, I have this special folder that updates whenever certain things occur. For example, whenever I connect my Bluetooth headphones, this folder updates the apps to all of my music ones. Or when I jump in my car, they instantly update to my navigation apps. This is all possible with an app called Contextual App Folder. Within its settings, you can create different scenarios for when the, the folder should update, including for your location, Wi-Fi network, Bluetooth connected devices, and more. And of course, you can also choose the type of apps that you'd like to show up when these scenarios occur. For the most part, it works just fine. The only thing to keep in mind is that it hasn't been updated for years though. Anyways, as promised, here's how to enable and set up the Shizuku app. There are multiple ways to do it. You can go on your computer and you can type an ADB command, or if you have root, you can do it that way. But if you don't have any of those privileges, here's how to do it locally on your phone. First, download Shizuku from the Play Store. Then go into the system settings and enable the developer options. 
Here are the directions on the screen if you're not sure how to do that. Next, go into the Shizuku app and select Pairing. Then, Developer Options. Scroll down until you see Wireless Debugging and go into that menu. Make sure Wireless Debugging is enabled and from there, tap on Pair Device with Pairing Code. You should see a menu pop up with a code and a notification that says Pairing Service Found. Type in the pairing code within that notification and hit Send. From there, it should say Pairing Successful, and once it does, jump back into the Jizuku app and on the main screen, tap on Start. It'll do its thing, and then you should see some new menus pop up, along with one that says Shizuku is running. Finally, to authorize those Shizuku apps, go into the second menu and enable whichever ones you'd like. Pretty simple. Anyways, click this video right here to watch a whole other set of 20 amazing apps that are not on the Play Store. Don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you'd like me to make another video just like this. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!